As a follow-up to my Nuctec series, I'm designing a better handheld gaming PC based on a Ryzen 7 mini PC, and I'm bringing you guys with me from the beginning. In the last video, I covered the PC and display I've chosen as a base for the project, some basic power consumption tests, as well as some of the drawbacks of the original Nuctec that I'm hoping to overcome in this version. In case you missed the previous episode, the PC I'm using this time is a B-Link SER5 with a Ryzen 7 5700U processor, but I'm also aiming to keep the design as open as possible without compromising on size or comfort, at least so that most mini PCs should be able to be used without too many modifications needed. Since the last video, I've been working on the design and layout of components. I'm taking advice from the original NUC deck on board wherever possible, so first, let's look into using some off-the-shelf buttons from another game console so that we don't have to make as many of our own. Thanks to the generosity of my contributors on Buy Me A Coffee, I've been able to buy a whole bunch of different buttons from a few popular consoles to compare, starting off with the Xbox One. These buttons are my favourite in terms of appearance, but sadly they pose three major problems for us. Firstly, the buttons are very tall, meaning they will take up a lot of room inside the housing. Obviously this is fine on an Xbox controller, but I am counting on having room behind the controller PCBs for batteries, so that's going to cause a problem here. Secondly, the buttons aren't all connected to the same PCB on the Xbox controller, as the B button is actually on the rearmost PCB, so we'd have to duplicate that in our setup if we wanted to use them. The third problem is that the buttons are tapered to match the face of the controller, so we'd need to replicate that shape exactly to make them look natural and that would really limit our design options. Next up, I've got some PS4 controller buttons. These ones are a lot more promising, although I'm not a huge fan of this style of D-pad. The buttons are tapered outwards slightly, but I don't think it would cause too much of a problem for our design, so I'll put these into the maybe pile for now. The only other consoles I could think of with a reasonably flat controller face that also have a full set of four action buttons were the Switch, Wii U, and the DS. The Wii U gamepad is promising, although I'm not a big fan of the asymmetric ABXY layout, and the DS buttons are just too small for a console of this size. On the original NUC deck, I used buttons that were roughly copied from a Switch Lite, simply because I already had moulds from some of the buttons and membranes I would need from the Retro Lite that Stoned Edge and I worked on a little while ago. So I picked up a set of Switch Lite buttons too, so I could measure them up and see how they looked. In the end, I decided that the PlayStation buttons were a bit too large to fit in the area I have for them, so I think I'll go with the Switch Lite buttons for now. If you've got any suggestions of buttons I haven't thought to try, please let me know in the comments. I will still have to make the trigger and shoulder buttons since they are pretty specific to the design of the console. I'll also need to make the volume and power buttons and maybe the start and menu buttons too since I don't want to lean too heavily on the switch light buttons to avoid having it look too much like a switch. Fortunately, I was able to purchase a resin printer late last year, so I should be able to print the trickier buttons which should save a bit of time and open up some design possibilities that I couldn't otherwise achieve with the CNC. I've had a surprising number of people mention that they'd like to see touch pads incorporated into the design, so I spent a bit of time researching what options are available, and so far I haven't had much luck. I've had a couple of good suggestions from the Discord group, but none have been exactly what I'm looking for so far. I'm tempted to have a go at designing my own in the future, but I'm pretty sure that could be a whole video series in itself, so I'll have to skip that for now and hope that you guys can find me something suitable. Ideally, they need to be about 20 to 25 mil in size and square or rectangular, as I'm not a fan of the round ones, and have a USB or PS2 interface already built into them. If you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments or jump on the Discord for a chat. As for controller software, I'm currently looking into some new options as I'd love to be able to have the controller support X input natively. I've found an Arduino library that does exactly that, but it's currently not compatible with the Pico. So I'd either have to try and modify the library myself to suit the Pico, or use one of the supported microcontrollers which are all significantly more expensive than the Pico. I don't know the first thing about modifying libraries for something as complex as a USB descriptor, so I think that could possibly be a long uphill battle for me, so I reached out for some help. Yvette or Griffin over on Twitter suggested using a pre-made firmware called GP2040CE, which does look promising. I've had a brief look through their site, but I haven't been able to find confirmation that it can handle analog triggers. I can see it can handle analog over I2C, which is a good start, 
but if I can't have analog triggers, I'll have to look elsewhere. I'll put a link in the video description so that you can take a look, maybe I've just missed it. Now that I have a rough idea of what components I'm using, I can begin working on the design. I'm not going to go through every single step of the CAD process in detail as that could be an entire video series on its own, but here's a quick breakdown of my process. First I make sure I have models of everything. The display was easy because Waveshare have a detailed 3D model on their wiki page, so I downloaded that and moved on to the mini PC. I had a look on B-Link's website, but unsurprisingly, there is no model provided of anything, just dimensions of the outside of the box. So I grabbed my verniers and started measuring. I spent most of my time ensuring that my measurements of the main board are as accurate as possible, so I don't have any trouble with getting the mounting holes to align. I then moved on to a basic model of the heatsink and fan, and then added connectors that I already had models for from the NUC, for the RAM slots, the USB, LAN and display connectors. The model of the connectors I've used may not be the exact same models or brands that B-Link used, but they should be close enough for me to be able to draw up an outlet cover plate, which is all I really need them for. Next, I measured up the switch light buttons. The ABXY buttons are quite a fiddly small thing to measure, so I just used my verniers to draw the basic model of the buttons first, and then I took a photo and loaded it into the CAD software to measure the angle of the little tabs to ensure they were correct. I did a couple of quick test prints on my resin printer to ensure the buttons fit properly and then I moved on to laying it all out and designing the body shape of the housing. I'm keeping a similar grip design to what I used on the original NUC deck but because this console is a bit wider and the joysticks are up higher I'm going to take an angled cut out of the bottom corners to help angle your hands and arms properly like I did on my first big handheld, the DIY UFO. With a rough design in place, I fired up my 3D printer and printed out a half of the controller to try in my hand and see how it felt. The shoulder button on my first attempt was a little too square feeling, so I angled it a bit more and increased the size of the palm cutout and printed again. The second one felt better, but was still a little harsh in the corner of the shoulder button, so I reprinted once more with more of a radius on the corner and ended up with this. There's enough depth to the grip to get a good hold on it, the shoulder and trigger buttons feel comfortable, and the joystick and ABXY buttons are in a comfortable position for my hands without requiring a major shift of grip position to switch between them. With all of this worked out, I took a copy of the housing shape and hollowed it out to prepare to start fitting hardware to it properly. My first job is to get the screen and PC in place, since they are the two largest components we'll have to deal with. On three of the four edges of the display, there is very little room for double-sided mounting tape, so we will have to use the included mounting holes on the back of the display driver PCB to hold it in instead. I designed these little rails which will act as a support for the screen, but then I realised I can also include the mounting holes for the PC in these rails. This will allow me to mount just about any mini PC in here with just a change of mounting brackets, as long as it isn't drastically larger than this one. I'll leave a bit of spare room around the cooler on the back cover so hopefully fitting a different mini PC should be as simple as making new mounting rails and an outlet cover plate. This should make the design much more flexible when it comes to updating it to a more powerful mini PC in the future. That just about wraps things up but first let's talk about this project sponsor PCBWay. Whether you're working on a small hobby project or a large scale production, PCBWay has you covered. With state-of-the-art facilities and a team of experienced professionals, they ensure precision and reliability in everything they produce. So whether you're a seasoned engineer or a budding inventor, trust PCBWay to bring your electronics projects to life. If it wasn't for PCBWay, this project wouldn't be possible, so make sure you check them out at the link in the video description. That's all for now. The next power management board revision is currently being produced by PCBWay. So the next video should hopefully be the final update for the original NUC deck. Until then, see you all next time.